The natural world is an incredible place, with thousands of different tasty fruits and foods for us to enjoy. But somewhere along the way, humans got involved, and we've managed to create some pretty interesting GMOs. From glow-in-the-dark livestock to plants that don't happen in nature, join me for today's video as we look at 15 of the strangest foods that are genetically modified. Number 15. Glow-in-the-dark livestock the year was 2007, and South Korean scientists were toying around with the DNA of a cat to make something truly outlandish, a glow-in-the-dark cat. From there, they took this glowing DNA and cloned even more vibrant cats from there. But just how were they able to do something like this? Well, it sounds a bit unnatural, right? Maybe, because the scientists added a unique virus to the DNA of some Turkish Angora cats, creating the genetic instructions that would create a red fluorescent protein. From there, they added these new genes into the nuclei of eggs. But the glow-in-the-dark fun didn't end there, because the Taiwanese scientists took a page from their book and created fluorescent pigs. So now, when they turn out the lights, the pigs glow a nice bright green color. So, all this begs the question of why would scientists do such a thing? Do we need glow-in-the-dark pigs? The answer is, of course, no. But while the green pig's existence isn't totally necessary, it will help scientists to study these special proteins in hopes of creating artificial animals that would help us with the research of human genetic diseases, and hopefully find a cure. But who knows, maybe one day you'll find yourself eating a pork chop in the dark, only for it to glow. Number 14. Papayas Despite what many of us may think, not all GMOs are bad. In fact, there are some fruits and vegetables that, without human interference, wouldn't even exist at all. Take the papaya, for example. The Hawaiian papaya industry is a big one, and much of the local economy depends on it. But all of that was severely threatened when the Hawaiian papaya were contracting ring spot virus, which affects not just the fruit, but the tree which it grows from. The new strains of the ring spot virus developed and became more and more aggressive, the papaya population began to die off, costing the Hawaiian production plants millions of dollars. So then, what did the industry do? Well, they got involved through genetic engineering and were able to create a new papaya fruit that was completely resistant to the virus, which in turn saved the industry. It is interesting because the ring spot virus also derailed the production back in the early 1930s, with this new resistant papaya finding success about 40 years later, meaning humans have had a hand in genetic engineering for quite some time now. So the next time you buy a papaya from your local grocery store or tropical farmer, remember to thank the growers, researchers, and scientists who worked hard to make sure these delicious fruits weren't killed off entirely. Number 13. Insect-proof potatoes When you're a farmer, there is really nothing worse than a pest infestation. These little insects can ruin a year's worth of crop overnight, making all of that hard work kind of pointless. It's frustrating, and enough to want to make anyone give up. So what's the solution? Well, you could use pesticides, which not only get on your crop, but then get into the soil, which in turn goes into our bodies. It's also an incredibly expensive process. Or you can simply alter the DNA of the crop completely and create an insect-resistant food, which is exactly what we've done with russet potatoes. People in lab coats went ahead and got to the root of the russet's DNA, bridging the cells of wild and cultivated potatoes, forcing them to combine. From there, they were able to create a new potato that would repel any nematodes that would like to nibble on the tubers and roots of the russet plant, which in turn destroys them. This new resistant russet is still under testing, but they exist, and when all is said and done, they'll be properly distributed to the right people who can in turn grow this new man-made crop without the fear of all those nasty critters making a meal of them. It's pretty cool if you think about it, and a great way to not only keep farmers in business, but also pesticides out of our bodies. Number 12. Broccoli have you ever gone for a relaxing walk out in nature, smelling all of the roses and enjoying the lush vegetation? Well, have you ever seen broccoli during one of those times? If you said yes, then you're lying, because believe it or not, broccoli doesn't happen naturally. Broccoli, the bane of every kid's existence, is totally man-made. But don't get it twisted, because that doesn't mean we're growing the green stuff inside labs. No one knows for sure when broccoli first reared its tree-like head, but it's widely believed that the first variety appeared about 2,000 years ago in Italy before being shipped out to the likes of Europe and North America. 
but broccoli is the product of centuries of very careful and very selective breeding that all began with a cabbage. This old, wild cabbage had produced small buds, but because it was biennial, it only spouted twice a year, leaving farmers wanting more. They created a controlled environment to force the cabbage to sprout multiple times a year, and when it produced a larger offspring with better tasting buds, they threw away the less palatable parents. This process went on for generations, with only the bigger and better cabbages creating offspring. Think of it as natural selection, except by the end of the process, humans create something entirely new, and they name this new crop broccoli. Number 11. Summer Squash There's nothing worse than tilling your field, sowing your seeds, and cultivating your garden only for your crops to contract a virus and die. And to make matters worse, if one of your vegetables is sick, they can pass that on to other species in your garden. And that's the end of that. And that is exactly what was happening to summer squash until 1995, when the Food and Drug Administration finally approved a new genetically modified version of the vegetable. Originally, so much of the summer squash population was falling victim to zucchini yellow mosaic, which disastrously kills off things like squash, pumpkins, and melons. When left unchecked, ear left with deformed, twisted, and stunted crops, which not only makes them completely unsellable, but also prevents them from reproducing. Zucchini yellow mosaic is bad news, and it's the last thing you want to see growing in your garden. But much like creating a vaccine in a human, scientists were able to inject the disease into seeds so that when they finally sprouted and matured, the new vegetables would be totally resistant to the disease. So not only does this new genetically modified food stave off disease, but it also helps to reduce the food waste we would normally see before its creation. So now, when you go to the local market for some summer squash, chances are you're eating the GMO version. Number 10. Canola Most of us cook with canola oil at home, but there's a good chance we don't really know what it is. Canola is a simple crop that produces pods and seeds, which are harvested and crushed to create not only oil for us humans or feed for our livestock, but canola was another crop that would fall victim to the herbicide, specifically the ingredient glyphosate. So then what are companies to do when the stuff used to kill weeds is also killing off such a big cash crop? Monsanto had an answer in the form of GMO canola. They introduced two new genes into the canola genome, one of which was derived from your everyday soil bacterium and the other being from the glyphosate enzyme. This new canola became impervious to the herbicide and was named Roundup Ready Canola in honor of the brand of weed killer that was causing it so much trouble in the past. So while it may have been a good thing at the time that Monsanto made this new invisible crop, they unknowingly created a double-edged sword here. This new canola is so glyphosate resistant that it appears as weeds all across North America and Australia, and getting rid of it has proven to be incredibly difficult. Number 9. Alfalfa Do you like alfalfa sprouts? Have you ever put it on a great sandwich or a salad or thrown it on top of some Mediterranean food? Well, then you should know that there's a good chance that the alfalfa you're eating is actually genetically modified. Like so many other plants, alfalfa is totally herbicide resistant. This wasn't always the case, though. The biggest issue for alfalfa fields was, of course, weeds, which would quickly entangle the roots and kill off acres and acres worth of the crop. Now, if you're going around spraying the weeds, you're naturally going to hit the alfalfa too, killing both plants in the process. So you can only imagine the problem this posed for farmers everywhere, especially because it's the fourth largest crop in the United States. So, it was up to people to create an herbicide-resistant crop. So now, farmers can spray the alfalfa to their heart's content, knowing that the weed killers have virtually no effect. It may sound a bit like overkill, but alfalfa generates nearly $11 billion in the United States alone. So it's not the type of crop that farmers can allow it to fall by the wayside. Number 8. Lab-Grown Meat in the last few years, food manufacturers have really gone above and beyond to bring us something that we once thought was impossible, plant-based meat alternatives. And while these plant-based alternatives are available at the big grocery and fast food chains, it seems like they never quite make up for the real thing. So that's why scientists are hard at work to create lab-grown meat in order to combat the over-farming of livestock and the carbon emissions they emit. Also known as cultured meat, lab-grown meat is made from cell culture rather than slaughter. 
But how is something like this even possible? Well, they take the cells from the original living animals, put them into a culture dish, and add the growth medium of sugar, vitamins, and amino acids, and stick them into a giant reactor. From there, the sample is left to grow until it becomes big enough and resembles meat. The process is incredibly difficult, and this meat mass may be a little less than appetizing. Although we can make lab-grown meat, making something as specific as a sirloin steak or New York strip proves to be the biggest challenge. So while lab-grown meat does actually exist, the taste may leave a lot to be desired. So don't expect to find some ethical lab-fried chicken on the menu anytime soon. Number 7. Rice it doesn't matter where in the world you go, rice is one of the most eaten staple foods around, feeding nearly 4 billion people a day. It's cheap, easy to make, fills you up, and isn't hard to make it delicious. But like so many other foods in stores today, rice is being experimented on to make it more resistant to pests. And while the United States has technically developed the first strain of pest-resistant rice, no one is actually using it. The new rice is still relatively new to the world, and no one knows for sure what the side effects of this rice could be. Luckily though, China is ahead of the curve in terms of research, and their scientists are working hard on creating a new strain of rice indistinguishable from its natural counterpart. And when that does finally happen, and it sees widespread use around the globe, it means that no one will have to spray their rice with pesticides ever again. On average, rice crops need to be sprayed four times a year, which is really a lot. And with so many people relying on something as simple as rice, you don't want them ingesting something like pesticides, as you certainly don't want famine to set in once a rice supply is ravaged by pests. Number 6. Soy At least within the United States, soy is one of the top three biggest cash crops, but it also just happens to be one of the most heavily modified foods in the world, with half of the world's soy belonging to some sort of genetically modified strain. But why exactly are they changing soy around so much? Well, there are plenty of good enough reasons, but perhaps the biggest would be to make it more resistant to insects and fungus, which allows for a larger yield year after year and less money loss. But they're also modifying soy to enrich its vitamins, fat, and protein content for when they use it as animal feed. And believe it or not, but soy also plays a pretty important role in the creation of chemicals used for pharmaceuticals. So we need soy. But soy manages to find its way into so many processed foods that we eat, especially in the United States, so there's a good chance that if the label reads soy, you're eating some GMO soy. And I'm not just talking about things like soy milk or soft tofu. Supermarket basics like cereal, bread, ice cream, and even something like chocolate all contain soy products in one form or another. So if you're looking for soy untouched by human hands, you're gonna need a time machine. Number 5. Milk Remember that old Got Milk campaign from the 90s? It was huge, and it felt like milk was actually making a comeback. But most of the milk you'll find at your corner store today is actually heavily genetically modified, which has churned up a great deal of controversy in the past. So much milk is full of what's known as RBGH, or recombinant bovine growth hormone. This hormone is made from genetically modified bacteria to produce higher milk yields by adding to the longevity of a cow's milk-producing cells for way longer than normal. And while technically RBGH going into the human body is okay, these RBGH cows experience a higher level of sickness and disease than your average cow does, and more sickness means more antibiotics, which then in turn go from the cow's body into the milk and then into your body. This obviously is not a good thing, and the use of RBGH in cows has been made illegal in Australia and the European Union. But guess where it isn't banned? If you guess the United States, then you're right. The US doesn't require any information regarding RBGH to be made available to the consumer, so it's really on the retailers to spread the word. And luckily, you'll find plenty of dairies and markets that refuse to accept milk from RBGH cows. Number 4. Featherless Chickens Featherless chickens? Who has ever heard of such a thing? Well, millions of farmers, that's who. Not only is defeathering a chicken no fun, but it's also grueling and a time-consuming process. And unless you're working at some big factory farm, it can take a mighty long time to pluck those pesky feathers until the birds are totally naked and ready to go. So, these new chickens have been genetically modified to be born sans feathers. 
It all started when an Israeli geneticist created a genetic mutation by naturally crossbreeding a bare, naked chicken with your typical broiler chicken, which is purposefully raised for mass consumption. And what he got was one of the weirdest chickens ever born. You have to admit that it's weird to look at a chicken that looks exactly like the uncooked whole chicken you'll find packaged in the store. But not only is this featherless chicken strange looking, but it also leads a pretty sad existence. Because they can't flap their wings and display their plumage for courtship rituals, the males will never find a mate. Plus, their lack of plumage makes them far more susceptible to parasites, bug bites, and even something as trivial as sunburn. Poor chickens. Number 3. Starfire Red Barb The name of this beautiful fish says it all. The Starfire Red Barb is a fiery red color and can sometimes rock some black stripes along the body. But the awesome characteristics of the Red Barb don't stop there. They have a more common name that may give some insight into what these fish really are about. Glowfish. These red barbs have been genetically modified to produce a brilliant neon glow that looks awesome even in the most basic of home aquariums. But how did scientists manage to alter the genes of these sea creatures? Back in 2012, the tiger barbs genes were spliced with the genes of bioluminescent anemones to give them their electric green glow, and their black stripes helped to give it a stark contrast to the bright light. And while it may be odd for humans to create a glow-in-the-dark fish, we may as all well enjoy them while they're here. But this glowing color will never fade away and the bioluminescent genes are passed down to their spawn. And while the glowfish is better suited as a pet rather than a meal, you can't deny it's an awesome genetically modified organism. Number 2. Disease-Resistant Pigs when livestock is bred en masse for human consumption, they tend to become very sick very fast because of their poor living conditions. So the normal thing to do would be to make the living conditions better, right? Well, absolutely. But that, sadly, is not going to happen. The meat industry isn't going anywhere, and to keep up the supply by keeping those animals alive, for better or worse, they pump them full of antibiotics, which in turn enter our bodies. And while taking antibiotics when you're sick is okay, taking them when they're not prescribed is not. So in 2008, at the University of Edinburgh's Roslyn Institute, announced to the world that they made a batch of disease-resistant pigs. Specifically, respiratory disease, which is quite common in those big cramped industrial pens. They were able to create this special pig by eradicating the section of their DNA that would otherwise leave them vulnerable to any respiratory syndromes. Think of it like computer programming, only the software is animal DNA. The reason behind the modification of the DNA is because the disease would kill over a billion dollars worth of livestock a year in Europe alone, so this could offer a safer alternative in the future. The only catch, though, is that the European Union has a strict ban on genetically modified animals in food production, but hopefully they can make an exception for this sort of pig and money-saving technique. Number 1. Belgian Blue Cattle Perhaps taking after Paul Bunyan's Big Blue Ox Babe, the Belgian Blue Cattle almost doesn't even look real. Photos of these ridiculously ripped cows are all over the internet, but their history really begins in the 1800s. It all began when Belgian farmers were crossing breeds with the hopes of the offspring producing more milk and more beef, plain and simple. But no one could have possibly imagined what the final result would be. By the 1950s, scientists became involved, and by 1978, these cattle made their way to the United States where everything seems to be bigger. Their most notable physical characteristic is their double muscling, which they have from birth, making the birthing process incredibly difficult for females, often resulting in detrimental damage. But because they have such little fat, almost every cut of the Belgian blue cattle is lean meat with less marbling and less tenderness when cooked. But despite their size, they only require half the amount of feed your average cattle would require. And when you have that much muscle on your body, you're going to need a strong skeleton to support it. Too bad for the Belgian blue cattle that their skeletons are the same as normal cattle, meaning the muscle presents them with a lifelong burden. So at the end of the day, what you have here is a genetically modified cow that provides twice the meat with half the flavor and likely half the lifespan. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.